Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and welcome to Nathan's Maker Box. Today's 3D designing and printing project is all gonna be about a tray for a game that my son owns. It basically contains six boards with nine icons each and for each icon you get a card. You played like a game that's called Bingo and well the problem is it, it usually looks like this and I want to make the system a little bit easier because my son is only three years old and he just cannot keep those cards straight on the board. I wanted to have a reason to design something, dive into a project that isn't too complicated because I've already got a couple of more complex projects lined up for the channel. But without any further ado, we have a card, we want to design a tray so we can put the card in that. Then we want to put a securing wireframe on top of it. And of course we want to make the six resulting boxes stackable as well. Alright then, let's get started. We're working with Tinkercad because I believe it's the most approachable software for new people, but you can do a lot of things in this online tool that I can make use of. I already measured the dimensions of the board. They are approximately 179 millimeters. We are going to start with a box right here. I first want to get the encasing dimension. So we're going to go with 180 by 180. This should give us just enough space in order to get the card in there. We're then going to click this box Control D in order to duplicate it. And the second box we want to make a little bit larger. I'm gonna go with a 4 millimeters larger, so 184 by 184. We then want to select both of these boxes, hit L in order to align and we want to center both of them. We're then going to select only the inner box. We can either click here, hole, or we can also hit the H button in order to make it a hole. And now if we select both of them and combine them in a group, the hole is gonna be subtracted from the solid object. What we now have is a 4mm thick wall and 180mm in both directions inside. The next thing I want to take care of is the floor. I don't want to fill it up completely in order to save time and materials, but we're going to need at least something to make this work. So I'm just going to rotate a box by 45 degrees and expand it all the way to the edges. I want to go ahead and using the Alt button we're going to drag this over in order to make a copy. And Now this should be perfectly centered. Actually, just to make sure, hit the align button here. Yeah, this is perfectly centered, so we can group these two together. And I want to lower this substantially. I want to make the floor about 2 millimeters thick. Knowing 3D printing, this is not going to go well. So what we want is another little curb. Let's go ahead and do that. Just want to set up a box of 180 and 2 millimeters. And we're going to make it uh, how thick? Let's do, yeah, let's do 15 millimeters. Gonna go ahead and copy this over for the other side. You can hit the shift key in order to shift something horizontally perfectly. I'm gonna copy this one more time and we wanna have 90 degrees here. Push this over there. And then I wanna copy this over one more time. Beautiful. Actually, before we group everything together, we should really take this wall and make it the height that we want. So we can do that without influencing the other stuff. The game boards seem to have a thickness of about two, so that will be here. Then I want to have two milli... let's actually do four millimeters for the securing wireframe. And then we're gonna have another two millimeters in order to be able to stack it up with the next tray. So that would be exactly one centimeter high, so six centimeters all of the trays stacked up together. Though there's gonna be an extra millimeter or so for the stacking mechanism. Anyways, now it's time to group everything together and have this as one piece. It's still missing a little something that we're going to take care of. So the next thing I want to make is a wireframe. So let's maybe make another work plane right here so we can place everything perfectly on top of this surface. The red borders of the game board are around 5 millimeters. So I would say we get started with a cube 5 millimeters wide. There, and we want to make this about 4 millimeters high. Okay, that's going to be the edge of my wireframe. Now the thing is, I want to make this a really tight fit. So once I push it in, it's not coming out without any force. With fast print settings, I want to leave about half a millimeter clearance in order to achieve that. So considering this is 180 right here, the inside, we want to do 179.5. And this should technically give me enough clearance in order to push it in there. If I wanted to be any more precise, I would have to print at very low print speeds. Okay, now that we have that, let's move this over a little bit. And uh, we are gonna duplicate this. 
I'm gonna rotate this over and get another one in there and another one in... Uh, hold on. Alt. All we have to do is line them up. Uh, so I have to change the snap grid to 0.5 millimeters so we can achieve that perfectly. You go right there. Beautiful. Alrighty, the next thing we want to achieve is a 3x3 wireframe. So maybe let's get things started with an actual piece of the wireframe. Um, let's make this 170 or uh, 72 for now. And then we're going to also make this for high. I think I might go with 1.5 millimeters. So it is still sturdy and everything. If I'm measuring the distance on the board, it's about 55 millimeters. So uh, if we move this right over here for 55 millimeters and then move this over 55 as well and then we're gonna have a quick look at it so if i copy this over here and then i want to move another 55 oh okay we end up right here so that is a little more space for the last one we're gonna do 55.5 in this case so i'm gonna have to move the next one one millimeter and if we do it like so, it's going to add up perfectly. So 55.5 is the magic number. We're going to do the same thing for the other side of the wireframe. And that would be 55.5. We're going to duplicate this, move it over just in place, and then move it another 55. Come on, 0.5. That means our wireframe is done and we can group this together. This should now be a real nice fit in our tray so that we have to push it in and it shouldn't be able to come out on its own. Now we could leave it as is, but I think it would be cool if we made this stackable. In order to do that, we have to add a little lip here at the bottom so we can actually stack it. Now, this is not going to be very convenient in terms of printing, so we're actually going to make this a third part. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. Maybe you can give it a like or even subscribe. That would definitely make my day. In order to do the lips, I think we can take one of our wireframes. This should save us a little bit on work. We are gonna ungroup this and get rid of the wireframe. We should then be able to regroup this and then change the size. And I want to make this 179. So there's gonna be half a millimeter of space. We're gonna need a way to attach these to the bottom, so I would like to make a little stick that pokes out of here. However, that is not enough space. That means I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker. We're gonna go with a nice round 10 millimeters. I'm then going to regroup them and I wanna make this thinner. This can be too... Uh, let's actually make it 8.5 millimeters thick. I think I made this wall a little bit too large. If we're lucky, we can uh, ungroup this. And at this point, we only want to make it eight millimeters high. So that would then make two millimeters for the floor, four millimeters for the wireframe and another two millimeters of free space where we're going to fit in this lip. To do the pole, we're going to add a little cylinder here, uh, which can probably be 10 by... No, actually it can't. Let's do it eight by eight. And we will be able to fit it nicely on here. Now, this only needs to be like two millimeters high. I'm gonna make this just a tad smaller, 7x7. Seven seven. Yeah, this actually looks like a good fit. Let's also place one in the center and one on the other side. Now I'm actually gonna make the hole exactly 7 millimeters wide, which means we need to adjust these. Now since I want to kind of poke these in and never take them out again, I'm gonna make the clearance a little bit smaller. We're gonna do 6.8, so that would be 0 0.2 millimeters less. Actually, with the fast print settings, let's maybe do 0.3. So, and that is the size that I want to drag and copy over. I also would like to align this to the center here, which works easily with the alignment tool. So you go up here, select you both and align you right there. These should hopefully be enough pins to keep everything together. Now, all we have to do is apply these holes into our design here. Uh, let's try to align this nicely. You go here and there. And I know exactly where I need to place my holes, which are going to have the 7 millimeter diameter. You know, I guess I, we could have made it easier on us choosing wiser numbers, but now I'm just going to rule with it. And we're just going to go ahead and try to align these holes to the best of our abilities. Said and done, all the holes are prepared. Let's go ahead and get this bottom piece out of the way. Select all of that and go ahead and group. Great, this should be the final design. Let's actually 
align all of these things together. Great, that is how it is gonna look like, hopefully. And as you can see, this should also be stackable, theoretically. Yay, let's get to printing and see how it works. I'm actually not gonna do a time lapse for this because I don't have a proper time lapse set up yet. I'm also not sure where this is gonna go with the channel if anyone is ever gonna see this video. And thirdly, it is definitely not an interesting print to time lapse. So let's just have a look at the final product. Here we go, here we are, all the parts printed out, let's put it together. First of all, the lips need to be attached to the base plate. Since we printed this with fast speed and we have about 0.25 millimeters of clearance for the pins to go into the holes, it should all fit. However, I made the lower part a little bit too large or it printed too large, which gives it a little bit of flex and therefore it's hard to poke in. In the background, you can hear my son singing, waiting for me to complete this so he can get his game card back. Next up, we can put the game board into the tray, and it is indeed a snuggle fit. And of course, the last thing is to put the wireframe on top of it. Snap that right into place, and that should now be one stable frame we can insert the card into. To wrap up this video, I'm going to fix the mistakes that I've noticed. First and foremost, this edge right here needs to be a little bit higher up. I have to ungroup this one more time so I can grab this. Is this the right thing? Yeah, it's only the edge. So I want to go from 8 millimeters back up to 10 millimeters just to give it a little more wiggle room. I cannot fit it perfectly in the space I had before. We're grouping this back together so this part should be fixed. Let's add a fix to the other parts. Considering this is only supposed to help us stack up the boxes, I think we can leave most of it free. We can only cover the edges, for instance. So each of these parts is going to be individual and it's even going to allow me to print it together with the wireframe. So what I'm going to do is drag a hole from one edge to the other. Just this little piece we're going to leave free and we're also going to expand it to the other side. And now we can simply combine these two objects and then we're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. You know, we could make it easier on us, just leaving one corner. So combine this as well. And now we have this single piece to print out four times. There we go. This should be all the fixes. It's now a working design. I'm not going to upload this anywhere because, well, it's very specific. Whenever I do more general things, I'm definitely going to upload them. But to get warm with this 3D designing and printing series, I just wanted to introduce something that I noticed I could improve. And I'm already having tons of ideas that I want to make a reality on this channel. So once again, if you're interested in that, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and see what's coming in the future. With that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Have a good time and see you soon. Bye bye.